In this video, we learn about the Goods and Services Tax or GST. First, let us very briefly look at the constitutional provisions for taxes. So what are the taxes that the centre can levy? They are the taxes on manufacturing, which is commonly known as the excise. Then the services can only be taxed by the centre, the service tax, and also the export and import, the custom duties and export duties are imposed by the centre. The state gets basically the state tax or the state VAT, the sales tax of the state or the state VAT. And also there is something called CST, Central Sales Tax. This is imposed on inter interstate sales. It is a central tax, but it is collected and retained by the state in which the good has originated. So in case there is a good sold uh, from Gujarat to let us say Uttar Pradesh, then the, the amount of the tax will be levied by the centre, but it will be collected and retained by Gujarat. It's an origin based tax. Now you might have heard a lot about a uh, value added tax. So I want you to first understand what value added tax really is. So let us say that we I produce, uh, let us say a loaf of bread for rupees 100. And let us say the tax uh, in all cases is 10%. So 10% of 100 is 10. So the final price is rupees 110. Now this 110, uh, this loaf of bread is then purchased by a baker or any anybody who uses breads let us say for something for producing bread rolls so he purchases this loaf of bread for rupees 110 he adds some value in it and he finally produces goods that is bread rolls worth rupees 150 now in this the 10 rupees have gone to the government so effectively he, he it he has 150 rupees worth of bread rolls in his hand now when he sells those he is going to again impose a levy of 10 percent which is rupees 15. So the final price becomes 165. Now this 15 rupees again goes to the government. Now if I add the taxes in the entire value chain, it is 10 plus 15 which is 25. But actually the product which we got, let us say if I exclude the taxes, is only of rupees 150. So 10% of 150 is rupees 15. So effectively we are putting a tax on the tax. So we should not be doing this because 10, when 10 rupees was already paid, uh, this was part of the price that the first guy has already paid. So now instead of this, if we have a value added tax, what will happen is that in the stage 1, he is paying a tax of, his, of rupees 15. But when he paid the price of 110, he has already paid for the tax of rupees 10. So effectively, he, he the government only needs to get the tax on the value added. So the tax that he pays is 15 minus 10. So 15 that is his tax 10% on 150 minus the tax that is already paid that is rupees 10. So which is rupees 5. So the total tax becomes 10 plus 5, 15, which as you can see is also 10% of 150. So to look at it in another way is that okay he purchased if I if I remove all the taxes, he purchased the thing for rupees 100 and after adding value it became of rupees 150. Now if I see at what value is added, it is rupees 50, 150 minus 100. So 10%. So basically he, in, in, in this particular stage, he should basically be paying only 10% of, uh, of that 50 which is rupees 5. So 10 in the first production stage and 5 rupees in the stage 1 and you get a total tax of 15. Now why do we need GST? First of all, currently neither the centre nor the states can levy taxes on a comprehensive base of all goods and services and at all points in the supply chain. So like I said, the centre taxes the services but the cent and also the centre taxes manufacturing but the states can't tax manufacturing, states only can tax, uh, states can tax sales. So basically, no, neither the centre nor the state can levy taxes on each point of the supply chain. Secondly, the division of tax powers makes both CENVAT and the state VATs partial in nature and contribute to the inefficiency and complexity. Basically, like even if I try to explain the entire constitutional provision, you will get confused. So like I like for instance, I told you the CST, central sales tax, is levied by the center but collected by the states, state of the origin. So these rules are so inefficient and complex that actually it reduces the efficiency of the entire economy. So we need a more simplified tax structure. Similarly, Whenever there is a value added tax, like I told you, 
there is a uh, credit for the tax that you have already paid like in a previous example the bread roll guy was uh, paying rupees 15 as tax but he sort of gets 10 rupees back and effectively he has to pay only rupees 5 so but there is no such credit allowed on the central sales tax or interstate sales the, this is not taken into account while calculating your value added tax so which was a, which is in a way a very big flaw so uh, this is the third point fourth point is that a, a major defect under the state vat is that the state is charging vat on the excise duty paid to the central government which again goes against the principle of not levying taxes on taxes because excise is a different animal and vat is a different animal so when we are the value added tax is basically only on the sale of goods after they come out of the factory so excise because is they are just coming out of the factory that is not taken into account when the uh, again the credit of this the taxes is calculated so this is these are the basic complications why gst's need was felt so just to give you some more numbers uh, almost 140 countries in the world have already implemented gst and they have a unified gst system now again this is also reason why this has been done businesses producing in one state and selling in another they pay a number of taxes and it, it is basically a high cost for consumers um uh, if according to ncaer if gst is implemented it is going to enhance india's gdp by up to up around 1.7% The current system of multiple taxes will leading to distortions in allocation of resources as well as production inefficiencies. Like I said, the more you complicate a system, the less efficient the economy is going to be. And like you, you can obviously understand it's a progressive step in the direction of tax reforms because the easier it is for people to comply with your system, the better they are going to comply and better tax collections you are eventually going to have with lesser cost to everybody, cost in terms of time, money, compliance costs and everything else. Now what is GST? GST is a destination based consumption tax. Now like we were talking about the interstate tax where I gave you the example of goods originating from Gujarat and going to Uttar Pradesh. So uh, the tax was retained by Gujarat. So I said it's an origin based tax. But in this case it's a destination based tax and the tax will be finally the good will be taxed in the final destination it will go to the state of the final destination. And it's a consumption tax it is taxation on consumption. A GST is a value-added tax to be levied on both goods and services. So, except the exempted ones, but basically it is levied on both goods and services, which is an important, very important feature of this tax. Uh, like I already told you, GST revenue will ultimately by be received by the state in which goods are finally consumed. So, this is important. So, earlier if Gujarat was selling something to Uttar Pradesh, Gujarat got the tax, but now the tax will go to Uttar Pradesh because actually the people of that state are paying for that product. So, the tax also in a way should belong to that particular state now gst is also a value added tax so what is new again i have already told you but this is just to clarify things a little bit more further gst is similar to the other value added taxes but it subsumes many other taxes it is going to have a unified structure and you will not have these so many taxes that are there currently secondly gst removes the cascading effect since currently both state vat and sen vat sen vat is the excise state vat is the interstate tax uh, state vat is the sales tax on uh, levied by the states a levied on goods at the point of sale and production stages respectively so like i told you excise you do not get credit for excise you are imposing sales tax on the excise duty so there is a lot of cascading effects which this tax is going to remove because it is a unified tax structure there is one tax for a product that is what it is now just to uh, clarify taxes subsumed under gst are like all the central taxes like excise additional excise duty excise uh, duty and the medicine service tax countervailing duty surcharges and cesses etc uh, state taxes like vat sales tax entertainment tax cst and many other taxes are being subsumed you just need to know that a lot of taxes are being subsumed under gst So in December 2014, the 122nd Amendment of the Constitution Bill was passed in Lok Sabha for levy of GST, which enables the introduction of GST by probably by around April 2016. So in the proposed model of that, of GST, the GST will be one number, but it comprises of three things. First of all, there's a central GST, so that part will be. taken by the center 
state GST levied by the state and integrated GST is again levied by the center. Integrated GST means it is levied on interstate supply of goods or services. So basically, if let us say you have, I'm just taking this as an example. If let us say the rate of GST is, um, um, let us say 25%, then I say that the central GST is, uh, let us say 15%. The state GST is, um, let us say 8%. And integrated GST is 2%. So these are just very rough numbers. Please don't take any value associated with it. So that those parts will go to these these you know center state and center respectively. So just to give you an idea of the numbers, currently India's average tax base as per 13th Financial Commission, 13th Finance Commission, was around 31 lakh crores. Uh, now if we if, if we bring GST. What is the revenue neutral rate for GST? Which means that if GST is introduced, the revenue, the tax revenue could either increase or decrease. So what is the number, that one number, which if brought about, will keep the tax revenue of the government constant? That is around 27%, which as you may feel that is somewhat high. Now, as we said, the, the interstate taxes, the CST, Central Sales Tax, which is basically an interstate you know, sale of goods, that is being reduced. So because of and that as I said was imposed by the gov central government but it was being collected and retained by the states. So that tax is the rate is getting reduced. So the states are set to lose a very big amount on account of that which can amount to the tune of 11,000 crores. So the concerns of the states, you might have heard that a lot of states were protesting against this introduction of GST. What is exactly their concern? First of all, the concern is revenue sharing. How is the revenue going to be shared? They want more details and more say in determining that. Secondly, there is a significant loss in tax collections anticipated by them. Like I said, the CST rate is going to be reduced and there's all sort of losses which they are anticipating. And also they are requesting power to tax petroleum and liquor products. This is a more minor point. So this is not a conceptual point as such. So GST bill provides for compensation to states for a period of up to five years. Like I said, because of the uh, reduction in the rate of interstate tax, the states set to lose, which the center is saying they will compensate to the states for a period of up to five years. Obviously, there are conditions attached to that. So I'll leave out the point on petroleum and liquor. So this was the basics of GST and just to make you understand what exactly GST is all about and uh, what the government is thinking about. Um, thank you for watching the video. Hope you liked it. Your comments and suggestions are welcome. Thank you.